Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Saturday, May 6th, around 7.30 p.m. Mountain Time 2023. We had a small geomagnetic storm for about three hours, G2 geomagnetic storm, and more is on the way as we have several coronal mass ejections that are should be reaching us midday tomorrow. More on that in a moment. The big story, fire. Almost 25,000 people in Western Canada evacuated as wildfire rages across the region amid hot weather and high winds. Keep calm. It's boom time. Did you know 85% of wildfires are lit by stupid people? Yes. It has very little to do with climate change. In fact, in this case, it is the greenies that have made these fires possible by not allowing Canadians to cut down the standing deadwood from pine beetle devastation. Those are the facts. And now almost 25,000 people who live in the Canadian province of Alberta have been evacuated as wildfires rage across the region, which is seeing abnormally hot weather and high winds and abnormally stupid people leaving entire forests of deadwood standing. You can see all the dead trees down here. Hmm, no wonder it's burning. Now, here is the terrifying evolution of more than, well, 100 wildfires across Alberta, and some of them are massive. You could find this map over on our Twitter feed, at Diamond the Dave. Oppenheimer Ranch Project, at Diamond the Dave. And let's take a quick look over at the smoke map. As we're running it through here, this has given us just a few days of heads up here. And you can see the massive amounts of smoke emanating from these fires in Alberta. Good news is they're heading up north into the Northwest Territories in the Yukon. Not a lot of people up there. Also interesting of note are the number of fires in southeastern U.S. and the smoke they're creating. Take a look at that. Ten fires near Atlanta alone, so... Lots of fires burning, none of them significant, but there is smoke in the southeast from fires early in the season. Take a look at that. Almost nothing in our region because of the huge snowpack. In areas with huge snowpack, almost no fires are present. Now on to the weather. Severe weather expected in the heartland as high temperatures near records. In fact, red flag warnings are in effect for more than 2.4 million Americans. Wow, so severe weather is coming. We've already seen severe weather roll through parts of central Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis. There are some videos here you can look at, some picture, amazing pictures of what appear to be gonads in the sky, but these are called Matamoris clouds, and some shots of the hail. Look at the size of that one. More severe weather is headed to East Texas in the nexus of the Schmexis. If the storm develops strong, expect them to quickly become severe. Large hail over two inches, winds of 60 miles per hour, and tornadoes. And the timing is right now, 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. So heads up if you're in East Texas. Storms with large hail and damaging winds move into Oklahoma, according to meteorologist Sabrina Bates. We could see hail in the tennis ball size. Look at that. Parts of Oklahoma could see severe storms that produce large hail and damaging winds Saturday afternoon and evening. So put your helmet on. Weekend severe weather threat increases into Sunday to risk level three for Iowa. So heads up in the Corn Belt. It is severe weather preparedness week. Did you prepare? I hope so. Flooding expected to close a 51-mile stretch of Colorado Highway. An approximately 51-mile stretch of Highway 141 is expected to close on Friday evening as the area prepares for high river flows and potential flooding, according to announcement by the Colorado Department of Transportation. The department is planning to close the highway between Naturia and Gateway at approximately 5 p.m. The total duration of the closure has not yet been estimated, but officials say it will continue until the flood danger subsides. They're worried about flooding to take out that bridge, and they don't want anyone driving across it when it does. Let's take a look at the weather forecast, shall we? Or, well, let's go to the forecast. 
Severe thunderstorms possible in the central U.S., critical fire weather across the southwest. Severe thunderstorms and heavy rainfall are possible over portions of the Southern Plains, Mississippi Valley, and the Ohio Valley this weekend. Elsewhere, unseasonably cool conditions are expected in the west with showers and mountain snow from the Pacific Northeast to the Northern Rockies. Dry and gusty conditions will result in critical fire weather conditions across the southwest. So heads up and don't flick your cigarette butts out the window. Take a look at the weather forecast here as we can see some severe weather threats in Texas right now in Louisiana. Move it through Sunday morning. That's when that system could explode over East Texas here. And the severe weather threat continues all week. So I hope you're prepared. Let's take a look at some of the snowfall totals. Here is snow continuing through Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday in the West. Snow Thursday and Friday. Here's Saturday and Sunday and Monday, May 15th, 16th, 17th. So the snow has ended in the East, albeit could be a little bit here um, in Maine. It's insane. When will that be coming through? That's pretty soon there. That's going to be on the 15th on Monday. So it'll be chilly up in New England. And it is dry in Spain it is currently facing one of its worst droughts in recent history. Water deficit is causing a severe crisis, and the opposite happening here over in the U.S. So let's take a look at the drought monitor. Extreme drought in Spain and northern Africa. Drought over in Russia there, as well as the eastern Canada there. Take a look at the drought in eastern Canada, as well as out throughout the center of the Canadian provinces. Most of the drought for the U.S. is gone, except for the Midwest here, and based on the models, let's take a look here. This is the total precipitated water. That is looking quite wet in the Midwest, which could end the drought in the U.S. Now, it's not looking as good for Spain, Madrid, especially central Spain. They grow a lot of food down here in the uh, southeastern portion of Spain, like in Granada. A lot of food production there. The bad news is that it's looking like all the way through the end of May, almost no precipitation for Spain. So that's bad news for Spain. Seismic update. Normal activity uh, worldwide. Most recent quake just rocked off here, 4.3 in El Salvador. We did have a five magnitude at quite a depth, 177 kilometers in Nuevo, America, Mexico. But overall, pretty quiet, except for the Kamchatka, which is kicking off 5.2. This could be Shivalush and some of the Kamchatka volcanoes charging up to make a boom. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Nothing spectacular going on. We have an interesting flyby of Shivalush, to say the least. Reventador puffing to 15,000. Popo to 24. And many more. Sabancaya unable to detect. And Cadavar back on the list puffing to 15,000 feet today. Hey, hey, and Shivalush Volcano, there were some flight observations that took place. This is the local update. On May 4th, local volcanologists carried out flight observations to investigate the current volcano's activity and its lava dome area. Recent pyroclastic flows and major eruptive episodes have covered villages in ash, and they want to get to the bottom of it. Let's take a look at that flyby here from volkstat.ru. No idea what we're looking at here, but it's part of the 35 second video. This is some of those flows, and we are gonna get demonetized with that club music. And you can see Shivalush out in the distance there. Snow covered. It is snowing in the Kamchatka. You can see all the fumaroles up there smoking because this is an active volcano. All the links will be below. And in Russian, make sure to get Google Translate to read it in English. Space Weather News. We did have a passage here of the coronal hole stream, and potentially it actually looks like a CME, to be quite honest, the way all the telemetry jumps here. But I do digress. That sent KP up rapidly to KP6 earlier this morning, and now it's rapidly dropped back down to KP2. But the forecast is to get back into geomagnetic storm tomorrow, peaking potentially at KP7 on May 8th. This is going to be a big event, all from a small CME headed our way. 
Here is the WSA annual spiral of the events in question. You see multiple CMEs coming out here, cannibalizing each other and meeting Earth. Boom, right there, midday tomorrow, with quite a large bump here in radial velocity over a two-day period. So could be an interesting event developing, and we will keep you tuned in if need be. There are lots of spots on the disc. Let's take a quick look. Not very active. As we can see here, the solar flaring has dropped down into B range. The X-ray flux is low, but space weather is high. Now, because the KP has dropped down, there is no aurora forecast anytime soon. But if KP 6 and 7 over the next few days does line up with the evening, it should be tomorrow night, we could see an another amazing auroral display into the low latitudes because our magnetosphere is waning and, well, the sky is lighting up. Now, the reality and myth of the Pira Reis map of 1513, I'm sure you've all heard of it. And if you want to know more, watch our video on Magnetic Reversal News in just about 20 minutes. World in Peril, Project Nanook, Polar Wander, the Expanding Earth, Ice Ages, and Bad Science. We will reveal what the Pira Reis map actually is showing. And it's not an ice-free Antarctica. And that's a boom to knowledge. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do and watch everything commercial free in one place. We love you. Be safe. And that's a boom.